Hello guys and welcome back to another video of Architects 3D Printing. This is the fifth episode of the Cura Custom Setting series. In the previous episodes, we have analyzed the quality, shell, infill and material tabs in the Cura Custom Settings menu. In case you missed those videos, I strongly recommend you to watch them clicking right here in the top right corner or well in the links in the description. In this episode, we are gonna study the fifth tab in the Cura Custom Settings menu, that is, the speed. But before starting, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, clicking here in this little Architect 3DP icon that you can find in the bottom right corner. If you do it, you will help us grow in and continue creating new content for special viewers like you. Okay, so to start, as always, I am going to import in Cura our test cube and change the view mode from solid to layer view. In this new update, Cura 3.3.1, they changed the auto slice option by default to disable, and I wanted to give it a try, since we'll be changing values along the video and we don't really want our PC to be recalculating the model every two seconds. Now, when we change the value, nothing will change in the model until we click on prepare in the bottom right corner. Alright, so if we open the speed tab, we'll see that by default we only have two options activated, that are print speed and travel speed. The first value will obviously control the movement speed of the nozzle when the printer is extruding material and the second one when it's not. As always, we are going to click in the setup wheel and we are going to analyze the possible options that we can show in our speed tab in the Cura Custom Settings menu. Some of them will be very useful and others incompatible, but let's have a look of what we have. The very first option will be an option that we had already activated, the print speed. But even if you set the print speed for example to 30mm per second, if you look at the printer while printing, you may notice that the speed changes, for example when it's printing the infill or well the external layer. That's because this value is overwritten by other sub-values, which will reduce the print speed in a 50%. And that's why we can notice this speed difference during the prints. A reduction of 50% used to work in most of the cases, but we are going to activate some of the sub-options to optimize the printing times without losing much quality. So for now we are going to activate infill speeds, outer and inner wall speeds, top and bottom speeds and support speeds. Notice that the support speed will not appear in the menu until we activate the generate support option down in the supports tab. Now let's analyze the behavior of these options each time we change our print speed value in the option on the top. For example, when we set a fast print speed, such as 80mm per second, the infill speed will be 80mm per second, but when it comes to walls, the inner walls will be printed at 80, while the external wall speed will be reduced to 40mm per second to improve the quality in the external layer of the model. The same will happen with the speed of the top and bottom layers. It will be reduced to 40 mm per second, while the speed of the supports will be 80 as well. Since the original option, print speed, will be overwritten with the other sub-values, we are simply going to hide it from our custom menu to reduce the amount of options activated. And now we are going to start slightly modify the values to increase the speeds a bit. We will set the infill speed to 80 and we are going to increase the outer wall speed to 60. We will also let at 80 the inner wall speed and the support speed and we are going to increase the top and bottom speed from 40 to 70 mm per second. That's not good at all for the bed addition to be fast in the first layer, but later we will find a specific adjustment just to control that. Finally, we'll increase the travel speed to 120 mm per second since it does not really affect the print and 120 mm per second, being a very fast speed, won't reach to break our 3D printer. After the changes, we can see that we reduced the printing time from 36 minutes when we choose 30 and 60 mm per second for print speed and travel speed to just 19 minutes with the new adjustments what means we reduce the printing time in more than one-third of the time in such a small print. Now we are going to print the cube two times with the two different speed configurations and the same material to see the differences in quality. But before that, we are going to disable the support generation and save the two G-codes in our SD card.
Okay, so as we can see in the squeak comparison, we can notice a really big difference compared with the difference of almost half of the time that the printer took to print the same cube. Now we're going to keep exploring the options that we can show in our speed tab in the Cure Custom Settings menu. So again, we'll click in the setup wheel and the next option we'll have to show will be the travel speed that was already activated by default. And right next to this one, we will find another option that we are going to activate, the initial layer speed. Actually, we are going to activate the two sub-options underneath. It's very important to have a good first layer completely adhered to the build plate, because since it could make the whole process a bit longer, it will drastically reduce the possibility of having fails in our prints. We are going to set an initial layer print speed of 30 mm per second and an initial travel speed to 60 mm per second. This way our first layer will stick perfectly to the mirror most of the times. Back in the settings visibility menu we are going to activate skirt print speed and we are going to let it at 40 mm per second as it was by default, since it is a good speed. Next we'll find maximum Z speed. If we show it, we'll see that it's set to zero, what means that it will be controlled by the firmware of the printer. It's working perfectly like that, so we're going to hide the value without changing anything and we are going to continue with number of slower layers. Activating it, we'll see that it's set to two and it controls how many layers will have the speed defined by the value top bottom speed that we set before at 70. It's ok if it's set to 2, since we chose pretty much the same speed on reducing it to 70 mm per second, so we are going to hide this option from the menu and continue with the rest of the settings. We're gonna skip equalized filament flow, since it's useful for printing thin walls different to the nozzle, something that we will always avoid when possible. Next, we'll activate the next options, enable acceleration control, print acceleration, top and bottom acceleration, travel acceleration, initial layer acceleration and finally skirt brim acceleration. Adding a small amount of acceleration to the different phases of the printing will make the movements more smooth and will slightly reduce the printing times. By default they are set to 3000 and 5000 mm per square second and we are going to reduce print and skirt accelerations from 3000 to 1500. Travel acceleration from 5000 to 2000 mm per square second and we will reduce the top and bottom as well as the initial layer acceleration to 1000 mm per square second. After these small changes, we reduce the printing times from 19 minutes to 17 minutes. And right now, I'm printing out the cube to compare it with the cube we just printed, but now using some acceleration. If we have a closer look at the print, we can actually appreciate the accelerations each time the nozzle changed directions. And after the print, as we can see in this quick comparison, the quality remains more or less the same than before, and we have saved 2 minutes on the print. Ok, so next in the settings visibility menu, we'll find the enable gear control with all its sub-options. I'm going to analyze it real quick and I'm going to activate the enable gear control, print jerk and travel jerk. By default, it's set to 20 and 30 mm per second and I'm going to reduce it to 10 and 20 mm per second so the print quality won't be affected that much. It will control the maximum instantaneous velocity changes of the print head and reducing it to these low values, we will slightly reduce the time of the print in big prints, while keeping almost the same printing quality. Finally, I'm going to print the cube one more time with a whole set of new adjustments that we configured today. That as you can see is massive, maybe one of the biggest tabs, but quite easy to understand. If we compare the four cubes we printed today, we can see slightly better quality in the first model that was printed at low speed, and the other three kept more or less the same good quality. If we need to print something with really high quality, we will possibly print it at a lower speed, but in most of the cases, when we print stuff for ourselves, using the settings that I have in my screen might be more than enough. And such a good option to go with, since we reduce the printing time from 36 minutes to 17, less than half of the time, keeping more or less the same quality. Since with the test cube a reduction of 19 minutes won't make a big difference, 
when we are going to make large prints, such as the Apple Multi-Charging Station, a project from the channel that you will find clicking right here in the top right corner, the printing time will be reduced massively. With the settings we had before, the print will take around 35 hours, and applying the new settings, it will only take around 14 hours, a massive difference of 21 hours that will increase our production to 160%. Now what I recommend you is to start playing with the options we analyzed today with your 3D printer. And if you enjoyed and learned with the video, please hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel clicking right here in this little icon that they will find in the bottom right corner. To stay tuned with progress updates and future videos, you can follow us on social networks at Architects3DP. Finally, if you want to support the channel, you can consider to support us on Patreon. From only $1 per month, what will make us extremely happy, and we'll also give you nice rewards that you can check in our Patreon page, navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp or clicking in the link in the description. Okay, so as always, see you guys in the next video.